Can I give you another mic? Oh, well, here's our county center in Yiddish. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Okay, my name is Anastasia Pancios. I live in Cleveland Heights. Uh, and my question is, uh, one of the things that alarms me the most about the Trump administration, among other things, is uh, Steve Bannon in one of the highest positions. This is a man who is openly racist, openly anti-Semitic, openly misogynist. This isn't even speculation. This is based on what he's written and what he said. And if Barack Obama had had somebody very remotely equivalent to this, like if he had Louis Farrakhan, for instance, who actually is an intelligent and thoughtful person despite some of his beliefs, that would have been complete pandemonium. But it seems like we're normalizing this. And I'm wondering what we can do, just as constituents and you know, Americans, to make this not be normal, to make this kind of hatred not be You might get lucky. I think last week they they um, sent six of the White House staff packing because they couldn't pass a background check. Uh, and they get lucky less than man out too. Uh, but I would say this: this is how you do it. You have to let the administration know that you're watching and you don't like it. I mean, as a matter of fact, they did not even understand that when they put Bannon on the National Security Council mm -hmm. that they were removing generals. This is how. This is how they. They have such a, such, how do I want to put it? They don't understand how it works. I won't call them names. Um, but you tweet. That's what he reads. No, I'm serious. He reads it and he's very, very thin skinned. And so I think it's important for us to let them know that we see it and we're going to respond. Because as long as he, talks about how bad the media is. He tries to belittle and to make us think everything except for what he says is insignificant. So we have to fight back. He fights just like he's fighting with us. We go on social media. That's what he listens to. Because he doesn't listen to anything else. I mean, we're going to talk about it clearly because we don't believe he should be on security council. But it takes people like you uh, and lots of you to say that we do not want a racist in the White House. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows that uh, John Harrison retired on me last year. <laughs> I want you to meet my new district director who is going to be starting on Monday, Jan Jasmine Rowan. Don't ask any questions today, she's going to start to Monday. <laughs> My, my name is Trudy Obergar, I live in Cleveland Heights. And Congressman uh, uh, Fudge, uh, thank you for hosting this and thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you. So, I guess I have a very basic question, which is what can we do sitting here in Ohio to take back the Senate next year? Because I believe that. Everything else that we do is vital and important, but if we don't win elections, none of it ultimately is going to matter. Uh, my specific question is about voter registration. As a private citizen, I have tried since the election to find local groups that are focusing on voter registration. I, I, I Google it the best I can to find who is doing this on an ongoing basis, not two months before an election, which frankly to me is an embarrassment that we approach certain communities and knock on doors, you know, four weeks before an election and then we disappear. That to me is immoral, right? So what do we do on an ongoing basis? Why, do, why doesn't the Democratic Party function like a real party? <laughs> and, 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 What, what I mean is, we should have memberships to belong to the Democratic Party, even if it's $1 a year. Why don't we have...
houses in East Cleveland where there is ongoing activity all the time involving young people. Why don't we have pizza nights on Fridays and movie nights once a month? Why don't we like build something from the ground up? And well, how do we, sorry, I'm done. <laughs> Let me say two things. You have raised one of the most important questions that I think will be raised here today. If you remember hearing the president talk about five million people voting illegally, that is for him to set a foundation to put in place more voter suppression laws. You know, we think it's just the rantings of a crazy person. It is not. He is really trying to now make it more difficult for people to vote. And so I think there are a couple of things that have to happen. One is that we are voting in Atlanta today on the new head of the DNC. And I think that um, you're going to find that whoever's elected has heard this from us over and over again. So you're going to see voter registration come out very strong and very soon. Uh, secondly, uh, I think that we need to now as well impress upon our own Secretary of State. You know, people think that John Houston has done such a great job. I've seen him on television a couple of times. But to me, we are one of the most regressive states in the United States. You can't have a county the size of Pahala County, a million and a half people thereabouts, so only have one early voting location. Yeah. We need to start to attack that now. Yeah. So I'm going to get you some names of, of organizations that are doing voter registration all the time because that is the key. We have to start to do it now. 2018 will be here very, very quickly. We've got a governor in Ohio, a senator in Ohio, and all of our state offices. We need to start now. And I think you're right, and I'm going to say to them that one of my constituents, because I know all of the candidates will run fairly well, uh, and I will say to them, I have constituents that are concerned about the fact that we don't operate as an organized party. And so we need to get our act together. Thank you. Good morning, Congresswoman. Good morning, Congresswoman Marjorie Fuzz. My name is Christiana Hughes, and I live in Richmond Heights. And my question is, are you against the Medicare vouchers and why? I am against the Medicare vouchers and let me tell you why. My mother's going to be embarrassed. I use my mother all the time when I talk to her. She gets embarrassed. She's sitting behind you, so don't do that. I tell people, my, I have my mother that's 85 years of age. If you gave her a voucher for $6,000 and told her to go and find insurance, there is no place that she could find it. Which would mean that someone would have to subsidize her. So do you think that that's fair to say to people who have worked all their lives, who have paid into this system, to have to now at an age, even if it's 65, go out and fight to find health care? Because as we get older, we use health care more. Yes. So it becomes more and more expensive. And the fact that we don't have a problem with Medicare. Medicare is the best insurance in the world. I would. And uh, thank you for asking the question um, from AARP. And I am a member of the Executive Council. So yeah. I am aware of.